June is quickly wrapping up. July is right around the corner, and that means you'll probably be taking some sort of summer vacation. The kids are out of school, you'll want to go to the beach. But more importantly, July is the month of my birthday. Happy birthday to me! Happy birthday to me! But of course, we also are getting new video games in the month of July, and usually summertime months are a bit quiet, but evidently a lot of third-party developers and Nintendo didn't get that note, because there are a lot of games coming out in the month of July, and many of these games for me are must-own games. So what are the games coming out in the month of July for the Nintendo Switch that you should have on your radar and you should be excited for. That's what we're going to talk about in this video. So sit back, relax, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and let's talk about the best upcoming Nintendo Switch games for the month of July. Hey, RGT85, hey Sean. Oh my god, it's Stevie Richards! So the first game we have to talk about is Red Faction Guerrilla Remastered Edition. Now this is a game that released on the Xbox One and PS4 alongside of Steam as well. It was originally an Xbox 360 game, but if you never played Red Faction Guerrilla, honestly, it's a game worth playing. It's a very unique game. Where the Red Faction games up until this point were first person shooters, Red Faction Guerrilla actually became a third person shooter. It's very over the top. You're playing on Mars and the Earth Defense Force is coming in and trying to regulate things. So you got to blow them up. It kind of reminds me of the game series Mercenaries that kind of unfortunately went away. This is an open world game where you can pretty much do anything you want and explore at your own pace. But one of the cool things about the Red Faction series was of course the destruction elements in the series. You can destroy anything you see, any building, piece by piece, or take it all the way down to the ground. And when you save the game and continue the game later, that building remains destroyed. So it really gives a lot of creative freedom in how you play this game and how you traverse through the story of this game. It's very fast paced. It's very action orientated. You're using different weapons. You have different vehicles you can use as well. It's just a really fun game. And considering that this is a budget release from THQ Nordic at just $30 for a physical version, I think this game will be very successful. Of course, Saints Row 3 did have some performance issues, so I am a bit concerned that we may see some performance issues with this game. But considering it's based on the remastered edition or remastered edition that came out for the PS4 and the Xbox One, it should be a much smoother port. This game releases on July 2nd for the Nintendo Switch and is is definitely something that should be on your radar. On July 3rd, Stranger Things Season 3 will be coming to Netflix, but Stranger Things 3, the game, will also be coming to the Nintendo Switch. Now, if you've never watched the Stranger Things series, it's a pretty good TV series, honestly, that of course is a Netflix exclusive. Based in the 80s with some supernatural elements, it can be very enjoyable. And the game itself actually looks kind of fun. You can choose from one of 12 different characters, all with unique abilities and statistics, and you can play in local co-op as well to play with a friend. The game kind of looks like Crusader No Remorse with that isometric top-down view, but I like that. I think the action looks very fun. I am curious though if there will be spoilers for Season 3 as these both launch on July 3rd. Obviously the events of this game are going to be taking place during Season 3, so I'll be interested to see if there are spoilers for the Season 3 television show that of course will be on Netflix. This may not be a day one purchase for me, but probably after watching Season 3 of Stranger Things, I'll want to pick up this game. It looks pretty cool, it's an eShop release, and it's something that should be on your radar when it comes out on July 3rd if you're a fan of the Stranger Things series. On July 12th, we have a big game from Square Enix, a game that a lot of people are looking forward to, and that, of course, is Dragon Quest Builders 2. Now, Dragon Quest Builders was, I think, a surprise hit. By blending things like Dragon Quest and Minecraft, you wouldn't think those two genres would really work together. But Dragon Quest Builders proved that it could work together, and Dragon Quest Builders 2 really improves upon the things from Dragon Quest Builders 1. You could do a lot more. You could do a lot more in terms of combat. There's a lot deeper story in the game as well, and, of course, you can make much bigger structures. There's vehicles that you can build to traverse the maps as well. It just looks like it's a better sequel. It's a game that takes the original formula that made the original game so popular and really builds upon it and improves it. I think you're going to get a lot of gameplay out of this game and it's a very strangely addictive game. Of course the fact that you can now play online with friends is just going to be another added bonus to this game that's really going to bring in the world of Dragon Quest Builders onto a bigger stage I feel. The game looks great, the presentation seems really good, so I think this is going to be a sort of sleeper hit on the Nintendo Switch. This game launches on July 12th, like I said, and it's definitely that should be something on your radar, especially if you're a fan of building games like Minecraft or even action RPG games. I think it's going to be a big hit, and I can't wait to get my hands on it. 
Also on July 12th, we have a game for Monster Hunter fans that are wanting some more Monster Hunter style gameplay with God Eater 3. Now, I've never played a God Eater game, but I do know that they play a lot like Monster Hunter games. So if you're a fan of big hulking creatures and teaming up with your friends and battling these creatures, God Eater 3 is going to be right up your alley. This game originally released on the PS4 and got pretty solid reviews. A lot of people said that if you're a fan of Monster Hunter, you're going to like this game. And from the vibe I get from this game, I think that's definitely a very accurate statement for God Eater 3. It definitely has a bit of a cult following. I know the previous God Eater games were very popular on things like PlayStation's handheld devices. So God Eater 3 is a game that I kind of have on my radar a bit. I do love Monster Hunter games, so I'm curious to see how this Nintendo Switch version of the game ends up being. You can actually play with up to eight people online as well, so that seems like it's going to be really cool in taking down these big godlike creatures in the game. And of course, it has a different sort of setting than Monster Hunter, whereas Monster Hunter sort of takes place in a Jurassic period with, of course, dinosaur-like creatures. This is in a post-apocalyptic area with bigger god creatures. So I think it looks really cool. It definitely has potential and it's something that's on my radar when it comes out on July 12th. On July 19th, we have what is probably my most anticipated game for the month of July for the Nintendo Switch with Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 The Black Order. Now, Marvel Ultimate Alliance and games like X-Men Legends were very popular during the PS2, Xbox, and GameCube area. Basically, you and up to three other people can play these games together, and they're action RPGs that feel sort of like Diablo, except they're taking in elements from the Marvel Universe. You're playing as different Marvel characters. You have different Marvel settings in this game as well. And of course, you could do things like upgrade your character. And Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 is a Nintendo Switch exclusive. I think the graphics that they use in this game are very, very nice. I like this sort of cell shaded look that they've gone in with this game because I think it makes the game really pop. The colors look really good as well. The combat looks better than ever. Of course, you're going to have a huge roster of different characters that you can play as. And now this game has online multiplayer in the Nintendo Switch version of it. So you're going to be able to team up with your friends no matter where they live. And I think that's going to be a very important feature of this game. Of course, there's going to be an underlying story as well that will probably have some twists and turns but really the gameplay is what brings me into the Marvel Ultimate Alliance series the fact that you're constantly getting upgrades to your attacks and your abilities in the game really keeps the game fresh and the fact that you can switch these characters pretty much on the fly at different points on the map really makes the game just stand out in my opinion I think this game is going to be a huge success I was completely shocked that it was a Nintendo Switch exclusive and I cannot wait to get my hands on it on July 19th I'm a big fan of vertical shoot 'em up games. I think they're a lot of fun. And Raiden 5 Director's Cut is coming to the Nintendo Switch on July 25th and will probably be a day one purchase for me. I really enjoyed Raiden on the Atari Jaguar. I think it's one of the best games on the Jaguar. And there's just something about vertical shmups that always draw me into this. Now, what's interesting about Raiden 5 Director's Cut is that this has local two-player co-op. I'm not sure if it has online as well. It does look like this game does have some sort of online features, but it could just be potentially leaderboards or something. But I do know for a fact that it does have local co-op, but I think the game looks really fun. This game has released on PS4 and Steam to mostly mixed to positive reviews, but I just feel like it's because it's a shoot 'em up game that some people out there just don't like the genre. I think the game looks really clean, and what's really strange is they're doing a physical run of this game in North America for $40, but after the first batch of games are sold out, that's it. They're not making anymore. So it's going to be a bit of a limited release game for the Nintendo Switch, but at $40, it should be pretty easy to get your hands on it. As a fan of shmup games, I definitely have this on my radar and I will be picking this up on July 25th. Usually you don't see Nintendo release two Switch games in the same month, but they said the hell with that in July. We're going to release Fire Emblem The Three Houses as well, alongside of Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. Now, Fire Emblem Three Houses is, of course, a return to form for the series as far as console games are concerned. We have not seen a console Fire Emblem game since the Nintendo Wii. It has been a very long drought. And Fire Emblem games are some of the best strategic RPG games of all time, in my opinion. It's tried and true gameplay that looks like it's been definitely redefined and refined for the Nintendo Switch. I really like the look of this game. I think it definitely looks great. I think the story is going to be very interesting as well. It's going to be a very long and challenging game, but that's what the Fire Emblem series is all about. I'm absolutely thrilled that Fire Emblem is coming back to home consoles, and I think this is going to be another big success story for the Nintendo Switch. Fire Emblem Three Houses comes out on July 26th, and it's definitely going to be a big hit for strategy RPG fans and just RPG fans in general. 
And finally, on July 26th, we have yet another game that is definitely on my radar with Wolfenstein Youngblood. I really enjoy what Bethesda and id Software are doing with their first-person shooters, games like Doom and games like Doom Eternal, and of course, Wolfenstein 2. I really enjoyed Wolfenstein 2, so I'm looking forward to Wolfenstein Youngblood. Now, the big addition of Wolfenstein Youngblood is, of course, the fact that you can play either local co-op or online co-op with a friend, as this game does have two main characters. It seems like this game is going to pack a lot of punch as well. It seems like the game is going to be longer than a lot of people anticipated. I want to see what they do with the graphics of the game though, especially on the Nintendo Switch version of the game. When Wolfenstein 2 first came out on the Switch, it looked good, but they definitely improved it in post patches in the game. And considering that Panic Button is doing the port of this version of the game, I want to see what they have now that they have games like Doom and of course Wolfenstein 2 under their belt, now that they've sort of figured out the Nintendo Switch. It looks like there's a lot of gameplay to this game. I think it's going to be really fun. And as a fan of games like Wolfenstein 2 and Doom, I think this is definitely going to be a day one purchase to me. Now, of course, there is a bit of a debate over the Nintendo Switch version of the game, as if you pick up the physical game, there is no cartridge in the box. It is just a download code, which honestly is very disgusting. And I hate things like that. So I'm definitely a bit disappointed in that. But the game itself just looks so good that I have to buy it. Wolfenstein Youngblood comes out on July 26th. And yes, I will be buying that game on day one one. All right, so those are the best upcoming Nintendo Switch games for the month of July that at least we know about for now. I'm doing this video a bit early than I usually do these videos, but with a lot of games coming out at the end of June that I'm going to be reviewing, I just felt like I wanted to do this video now, so that way I made sure I had it up and I wasn't stressing to get it up. So let me know in the comments section down below what games you're going to be picking up in the month of July, what games are on your radar, and what games I might have missed in this list. And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications, check out other videos on the channel, Check out all the links in the description box down below. Be sure to like the Facebook page. Follow me on Twitter. Check out the new merch in the store. we got the Big If True shirts available now. I know a lot of people were excited for that. And as always, I will catch you guys on the next video. Later.